Hey guys, you're listening to the CrossFit Bangor podcast. On this episode, I interview Caleb Pelletier. He talks about his journey from West Point to going home and finding a tumor in his brain. He, we also kind of dive into kombucha and gut health, and he makes me take a shot of this nasty, nasty gut juice. <laughs> uh, we really enjoyed making this one, guys. He has a really interesting story, and I hope you get something out of this podcast, and I hope you enjoy listening. Here's the show. Definitely that is, fancy. That is fancy. All right, you want one of these date rolls, bro? Yeah. I talked about these on the podcast last time. People seem oh. to like them. So they grab one. No, oh. you, dude, they're yeah, like they're like munchkins. They're like munchkins. Munchkin? Oh, you oh. just went. You went whole roll. You didn't. You didn't eat the whole thing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you're making me I look. Went half you're, a making, roll. <laughs> you're making me look crazy. <laughs> I didn't know how I was supposed to. This was my first date roll. So, All right, man. Feeling good. Feel good? I do. All right, man. Mm-hmm. Um, let's start off with um, your athletic background because you got some stuff to talk about there, and then maybe how you yeah. found CrossFit, and uh, and then we'll take it from there. Yeah, um, I was thinking about this the other the other day, and I was trying to figure out the. I, I guess I realized I never really told my side of the story. I've or even thought it through, so right. Um, but they kind of go in hand in hand, so. Um, Bear with me if I jump around. I, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Unacceptable. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, it all started in 86. I was born. No, <laughs> <laughs> Are you about to rap? <laughs> about to go way back. Take it way back. Slow down. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to have to reschedule. Panic, panic look came over your face. <laughs> oh. um, this is a mistake. <laughs> this was a terrible mistake. <laughs> Who scheduled I should have never done this. This is, this is not good. <laughs> mm. No, um... I mean, for me, uh, I guess for me, it started like athletics started in high school with the most. I mean, I was always really athletic um, as, you know, as far as being able to take to sports pretty naturally. Um, I mean, it, it was three sports, you know, throughout high school. And I knew, you know, I was just very, always very confident with, with athletics, but somewhere kind of like got drawn into wrestling um and i didn't really fall in love with it until high school so yeah. um but that was my f- my first real like oh this is this is more than just another sport the other ones i did because it was fun and i loved being active and everything but um wrestling was like my all of a sudden was a passion so mm-hmm. so yeah i got got into wrestling and um really kind of um Freshman year was was my first like awakening as far as um, you know being introduced to a higher level of competition for wrestling, um, and then um, just continued to plug away at it. So my summers were spent wrestling. All the other you know play the other sports, but it would be to travel and wrestle and um, yeah. So kind of developed my uh, passion and love for it through high school. Uh, freshman year I was a uh, I ended up winning third in states. Um, oh, wow. And then freshman year. Freshman year, yeah. And then um, from then, it was like my sophomore year, something clicked. And then I won states the next three years after that. Oh. Um, so it just like the mentality side of it clicked for me. And mm-hmm. I just, I love the challenge. I just love to push myself. And I love the feeling of just, um, you know, that punishment feeling after you're done, just feeling right. destroyed. But man, you, just got something accomplished so mm-hmm. so that was just like my passion I just really loved that that push and that grind and just and coming out either you know victorious or losing and then having to really look at yourself and figure out okay you know be honest with yourself how do I where do I go from here <clears throat> but so anyway so flash forward I guess a little bit to the end of my senior year um I uh, knew I wanted to pursue it. I, I wanted to keep going further with it and um, was looking, trying to figure out what I was going to do for school and always at the same time knew I lo- like really had an interest in the military and everything. Um, so I, did, I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, my cousin got accepted into West Point and that was the first time I really heard about the school. And so I looked into it and was like, wow, this is really cool. Um, I love the idea of this. And then um, I saw that they had 
their, you know, their athletics were D1. And so then it yeah. really upped the interest level for me with their wrestling team and everything. So I, I started the application because very different uh, sports there where even though it's D1 and the coach can have some say a little bit, you still have to be, you know, you have to be accepted. They, right. They'll, you got to get the congressional nomination, all mm-hmm. that. And that's no and joke stuff. to get and into. No, like it a was West a point. real pain because it's the physical side of things. Then they also do, um, um, they do uh, academics. And then you got to make sure that, you know, those congressmen consider you worthy of their nomination. They only get like four uh, ever. Whoa. And so once they use them up, they're not allowed to, you know, they're done. So if you can get one of those, you have a pretty good chance and still not guaranteed to get in. So I even, still, even with, a, even with oh, the congressional. What? Yeah. So you, that's just part of it. If you get it, it's great. You know, you, it's, it's, um, it's a huge step in the right direction, but it doesn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, I went, started going through that process and I just, kind of you know got focused and we contacted the coach I said they were interested you know they wanted me to come wrestle and I was I was very excited I was hoping just to get in so uh, I mean it was a huge part of my year just applying I mean it's a very long process so finally um, got word back that I got accepted and uh, they wanted me over there you know obviously you start that year you graduate you go there for that summer you start your basic training and then go to school and, and right. all that stuff. So, and uh, for people who don't know, it's it's um, very challenging both militarily and then academically. And then if you're doing sports, it's a whole other thing on top of it. Yeah. So, um, so you're just trying to survive that first year pretty much. Right. Um, and so, yeah, so I got there and... Um, we did the first year, first um, semester, finished this basic training, really didn't have much of an issue there, you know, obviously other than it being challenging and, right, right, right. and all the, the fun hazing part of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and then, and then things kind of took a turn for me, you know, I was wrestling and um, enjoying it, loving the, the tough, you know, the totally different level. Everybody's a state champ in that, you know, and when you're right. at that level and, and so everybody's just going at it and uh was really enjoying that but um and uh yeah I guess I should say I really finished that first semester everything was was doing doing well at that point I passed all my classes which is a really good to do <laughs> your first year first yeah, semester right. it's it's not uncommon for people to fail because you're doing you have to do a minimum of 21 credit hours plus your military training plus your um your athletics and they give you typically about six hours of homework a night that has to be finished. Oh, no big deal. Um, so yeah, no big deal. You know, just uh, <laughs> just doing doing the day to day. And so I, I went through that. No, really um, challenging, but no issues. Really, kind of thought I was finding my my groove. But um, it wasn't until the second semester when I came um, back from Christmas break that I started to kind of run into some obstacles, which you know, you don't really, uh, you, you kind of shrug them off at the time. But for me, it was a, it was a couple of things. And I wrote them down because it happened so different, you know, many different ways. But the first thing I started feeling was um, like loss of concentration. Okay. And it just kind of came on, uh, just slow, just minor, just thinking, ah, I'm just getting stressed, you know, hard to focus on stuff. Don't, don't really even think about it. Um, get some headaches here and there, things like that. I'd be tired uh, a little more. But, you know, those are all just, things you feel like ah, I'm just overworking myself um you know wrestling between school everybody's doing this dealing with this right right um but by the end of that semester I'm I'm struggling in two classes which I was not doing before so um chemistry was one I was failing in and then calc 2 was the other one um and so I'm I'm failing these classes I'm trying to you know don't know why but you have to make them up that that summer so So I finished the semester and I have to stick behind. I can't go home. Um, you know, I have to stick behind and stay there and do summer classes, make up for them. Fine. Um, and so <clears throat> during that time, you finish your classes and then you immediately go right into your summer training again. So you're back out in the field doing your military, you know, stuff. Yeah. Um, that was when things kind of changed. Um, we'd have our physical test um, and all of a sudden, you know, I maybe go uh, 
we'd, we'd do a two mile test and I would run maybe a half a mile and all of a sudden I'd, I'd have to throw up. I'd be like over on the side of the road, like puking my guts out. Mm-hmm. And this is, you know, someone who's supposed to be in shape for wrestling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. it was really weird. And then the, um, the, you know, the headaches were still there, concentration, but theirs are increasing more and more and, you know, not really thinking anything of it. Um, and I was thirsty all the time, could not figure out mm. like how to quench my thirst. And I couldn't like not quench my thirst. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, that was a tough, I rem- specifically remember, and I don't know if you remember, like, did you guys get those Gatorade things in your oh, yeah. training? Yeah. They chew on them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so like those, and then they'd give us, um, Gatorade boxes and, uh, pouches at, at dinner time. We yeah. get those I and mean, I could never drink enough of them. Like I could yeah. never get a hold of enough, um, and so, like, and then my my motivation level started dropping during that time too. Like, just my ability to to wake up too in the morning got harder. Um, and so, anyways, managed to get through the summer training um, through all that. School starts uh, next year, sophomore year, and now I'm like, I'm barely keeping it going. I'm still in denial the whole time. I don't know what's going. I just think I'm overstressed or overdone. Yeah, yeah. I just. I just need to sleep, whatever. And uh, so by that point, um, I mean, I'm exhausted. Headaches all day long now. I can't get rid of them. Um, anything physical, I'm puking. I couldn't even keep up in wrestling practice or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And this wasn't um, something you were experiencing back in high school, though? No, no. Um, nothing nothing that I remember um, that that stands out to me. There's yeah. not one thing that stands out to me at all. And even my my summer my first summer at west point didn't notice anything Hmm. um other than being tired but i chalked that up to just the stress of you know training nothing nothing crazy and um but it started to seem different to me i I realized something was going on but still denying when i like all my body hair fell out like i had no hair on my body like completely, completely smooth. <laughs> <laughs> you should have swam. I should have. <laughs> that guy's dedicated. Was, <laughs> that, guy, that guy looks he like must, a seal. He must wax. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so, like, yeah, so I'm thinking, man, I'm like, what? I must be, you know, again, stressed. That would I'm freak me out, bro. I'm going to be real with you. Like, uh, I, how you're still staying calm at this point is miraculous. Well, it's, like, you know, when you're, when you're healthy, when you're healthy, like all throughout high school and you're, you know, you're, you excel at, at athletics and stuff. It, you don't think about that. You don't think yeah. about it at all. Everything's just because of this. So mm-hmm. I'm thinking, man, I'm just way stressed. <laughs> I'm so stressed. My hair is falling out. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my leg hair? gone. <laughs> Where's my leg hair? It's gone. <laughs> um, but then what kind of was the wake up call for me is, um, I ended up getting extremely sick just out of the blue, like out of nowhere. And, um, it was, I remember just getting back to my room one evening and I got, I got so sick. I was just puking and it was, there was, it was almost like the flu, but it went on for an entire week straight. Whoa. And you don't miss, you don't miss a day of classes there. If you do, you're buried. And so I'm mm-hmm. missing a week of classes because I can't, I can't get up. I can't even go. So finally my, I think my, they, they checked my fever and I was like, a, I don't know, whatever the, one whatever is like a half a degree below emergency room like you oh, know wow. I was just floating around there in in and out of consciousness mm-hmm. for a week and and so when that happened um i you know i i still you know making excuses in my head but i knew kind of something wasn't quite right at that time <laughs> and so i'm like i gotta get out of here yeah. um because i can't keep up number one and the only thing that you know sick all does for you is give you 800 motrans yeah <laughs> so, right. so you go in there um you know they're not really going to do anything they're going to check and so i i finally you know went through the process of like all right, i, I got to get out i don't know what's going on but something's not right so right and so i started through the process of getting getting out of there and finally got discharged to go home um which is as, almost as much of a pain as getting accepted is to get out <laughs> so yeah um but anyways, I go home that Christmas and my mom was like the big driver behind like figuring out what was wrong with me. And she knew something wasn't right because I was, you know, yeah, my skin was yellow, like obviously no hair, every, everything, all this stuff was going on. Um, and so finally, after all these tests, all these, you know, things that the doctors did, they found through an MRI that a really large uh, tumor 
on my pituitary gland. Holy shit. And it was, it was, I don't even remember the size of it, but it basically surrounded the pituitary gland. So, which yeah. means, you know, body's not producing any hormones. Um, the big issue also being that no longer producing adrenal, you know, um, right. So that's where I'm getting sick and very lucky. I didn't have any like renal failure or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it also was pretty much a miracle too, that I didn't go blind because it was pushing down on my optical nerve. Um, and we're supposed to take boxing <laughs> your first, your <laughs> freshman year. That's part Whoa. of, part of classes. You take boxing and, um, and then you, I mean, I'm also wrestling. So the fact that one of those things didn't knock me yeah, blind that, yeah. was, I was incredibly lucky. So, yeah. So once we found that out, it was very quickly, like within a couple of weeks, I mean, surgery had that thing out. Um, and they were 90% sure by the, what it looked like. It wasn't cancerous and it wasn't, but they were concerned about it growing back. Cause it was the type that, that does come okay. back. Um, so they, um, after they took it out, I had to go to mass general every, uh, I think it was every other, I forget how often it was, but I was there pretty often getting, um, radiation treatment, like proton radiation. And, uh, they're just zapping my pituitary gland pretty much. Um, and so anyways, that whole story pretty much to kind of explain, you know, going from, I'm so used to being able to push myself physically. Well, stage, three times state champ. Yeah, ex exactly. To getting nothing. into yeah, yeah. well, you get into <laughs> so, one of the most prestigious yeah. schools in the country, then yeah. all of a sudden, yeah, you have no leg hair, and yeah, then I got no <laughs> leg hair. I'm walking around, I'm hairless. <laughs> so, so it was, uh, yeah. It was, <laughs> I'm just for, thinking about how many dudes right now are just like, <laughs> I don't want any leg hair. <laughs> yeah. So, if you don't want leg hair, there you go. Um, yeah. But no big deal. Yeah. So no big deal. <laughs> so yeah. So I, and, but it, it really was just the start of it because, um, of all the issues I went through, that was just the beginning because for the next nine years or so I went through problems with hormones Okay. and they could not get them balanced. Right. I mean, I was going through sleep issues. My, my wife and I after, well, we got married after that whole ordeal and yeah. then, um, decided to move to Florida and, I should I should back up and say after the surgery I tried to go back to school and wrestle again. Uh, okay. My brother was at at Liberty at the time, which was also a D one program. Mm -hmm. Coach offered me a spot there to go wrestle, and I I took it, but I showed up. It was too quick and um, pushed it too hard, and literally couldn't. Same results. S same type of results in the sense of um, I I my hormones were not proper couldn't so I, yeah i couldn't anything. recover so i'm walking i couldn't even go to classes because i was so um drained and then not dizzy all the time yeah. i could not recover so i had to step away from that and so and around that you know we decided to go to florida and move there um and you know this is still fighting with hormone problems and i mean i'm hitting you know depression i mean big time i mean for sure uh, just you know that, that was the the wake up call like all right wrestling's done you're you're done wrestling you can't do it um and so it wasn't a good place um especially so that i still was fighting all the hormone problems so those are just playing into it um i can't sleep all that stuff so mm -hmm. um but now finally, at this point were they were they yeah. prescribing you medication were you i mean were they trying they, different things like yeah yeah, and they were. They were doing different things. Mm -hmm. um, and did you see any relief from that at all? Yeah, or? there was some improvement. Um, but, you know, um, things like, uh, you know, the doctors I, I found out really were not doing a good job until I came back to Maine, actually. Okay. Um, because my levels were so far underneath the normal levels of what they were supposed to be that... Uh, so they were under -prescri under, essentially under-prescribing un you in terms of... Under-prescribing, okay. absolutely, yeah. And a big, you know, there was one one time that was a, made me realize how much it was because I get, ended up getting really sick and had to go into the ICU um, because I was starting to have renal failure because my <laughs> adrenals were not being replenished properly. So right. that was a very close call. I actually um, did not realize how, how badly that was. Um, but that was enough for me to wake up and kind of get a little more serious about my health and taking care of things on my own a little bit. Right. Um, and so going that way. Um, but uh, so I 
were there. Things started kind of getting a little better. I get a coaching job um, as a high school head coach for wrestling. Uh, I also started getting involved in like a mixed martial arts school, coaching their uh, their MMA fighters, the wrestling, and then I got involved a little bit of jujitsu on my own, just for the heck of it. I was trying to find something to scratch that itch, you know. After right. you leave, something that you you know you get to push yourself and grind. It's like you're trying to scratch that that one itch, and I, it still wasn't quite the case. It got me there a little bit, but it just wasn't mm-hmm. wasn't really the case, um, and kind of to bring it around to where we are now with CrossFit, I remember moving to Florida and I think it it probably was like 2000 and maybe 10 or 11 or something like that. And I saw the CrossFit games on TV um, and we went out to eat and I remember looking at them and I was like, what is that? I was like, that is awesome. Whatever that is. And my wife, I, I still remember, I was like, I can, I can picture you doing that. That's something right up your alley. Because I just right. thought, you know, that, and it was. But at the time, I, I, I couldn't picture myself doing it because I was still so mm-hmm. just done meant, uh, physically. Um, and so that was always, so CrossFit was always in the back of my mind a little bit. I, I knew about it and I was intrigued by it, but I never had the ability physically to push myself and go do it because I knew I couldn't hang. I knew I would not be able to. Right. Um, and I could barely keep my own workouts going at the gym. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so after we had our um, daughter, um, I also got a job offer to come back to Maine. Um, I guess it was 2008. And, um, or no, I'm sorry, not 2008, uh, 2000, 2016, I think oh, it was. Yeah. Just so, a little off. Yeah. Just, the, just minor, minor details. I'm still living <laughs> a little while ago. Um, but yeah, so we, we decided to take it cause our family's here and everything. And, and so I got back here and got hooked up with a, um, endocrinologist here who really took me towards the right direction as far as, you know, my health and I, n- I noticed some improvements right away, um, and we were very good friends with Caitlin, um, goes here, yep. Kobe, um, and I knew that she was doing CrossFit, and I was I was already interested. I was like, I need to stop by and check it out, and I remember walking in the gym, and at the old, well, I guess the right. second, the second, second gym, gym yeah. the one off Odlin Road, yeah, and uh, I think you were you were coaching somebody, yeah, yeah, you were. And you're just, uh, so you were busy with them and Mel was there and like cut off sleeves, you know, just <laughs> flexing left and right. Um, <laughs> but she really wasn't, she was just standing there. She wasn't, she was just standing there. <laughs> um, so no, and she walked up and kind of, you know, asked me a little bit about it. And I know you guys were swamped during that time because it, mm-hmm. it was like right after New Year's and everybody's doing yeah. probably their New Year's resolutions and stuff. So, um, and so, yeah, so the rest was kind of history, but mm-hmm. um for me, when I finally like got going into CrossFit, like it was literally the first time that I was able to physically push myself again. Yeah. Like, and just based off the you know prescriptions coming back to normal again at my levels, um, and then and just getting that feel. So like CrossFit has filled really what I lost a long time ago. That I I have been looking for some, you know, that, that piece has just been missing, right. you know, that's, that's part of my personality. And mm-hmm. so, I mean, I will, I'll forever be involved in CrossFit from now. I mean, cause yep. this is, I don't, I don't see another way for me to get, you know, that, what I need and yep. just to be able to push myself physically and mentally and just feel exhausted after and feel right. like I accomplished something. Um, man, this is, this is as close as I got. So yeah, yeah. I tell the whole story to kind of, <laughs> kind of come around in a circle. No, I, think, I think that's really interesting. <laughs> I think yeah. I, I didn't even know some of the, yeah. the details of that. So it was super eye opening. And I think, uh, CrossFit does give a lot of people that outlet that they might've had before. I don't think you need to be, yeah. you know, a D one, uh, athlete to appreciate oh, no. that competitive yeah. edge, that wanting to compete, that wanting to, to push daily, yeah. Um, and I think most of the people who come here, they have that. I mean, oh, they're, sure. I mean, it's not that many of us. If no. you, the grand scheme of things, yeah. there's 232, I think today yeah. out of, out of 30,000, just in Bangor, yeah. like it's a select kind yeah. of person, yeah, a type exactly. person that comes through those doors. Exactly. And stays no, here, that's so. exactly right. I would say that everybody has that, has that 
that drive to see themselves improve. I mean, this, yeah. that's why it's not for everybody because, mm-hmm. you know, not everybody's going to like that feeling. <laughs> right, for sure. So and keep coming back. What but. Um, did you, was there anything specifically that you took away from wrestling that, that you can apply here that, that something that someone else might um, take away from it, like a, the mentality or a way of training or. Yeah, definitely. I would say first and foremost, the mentality. Um, th- there's something about going out onto that, like that mat or in the wrestling room is it's just you and that other guy. Mm-hmm. And if you, people who haven't done combat sports or, or grappled or anything, I would say, imagine trying to power clean, something your weight but that thing's trying that that barbell's trying to power clean you back <laughs> yeah. you know yeah, it's, it's a like good going way. down yeah it's like yeah. oh god right um so that's so you're going through that battle but if you fail there's nobody else to blame but you mm-hmm. i mean it's it's all you and right. you know that when you step off the mat and if you are not willing to address it or look in inward and check yourself right. out and see okay where do i need to improve or was he actually better than me, you know, or right. was it just, I wasn't prepared mm-hmm. and, um, just being able to conquer that fear of, Oh, it's, it's all on me. I think that that right there is, is great tr- transition here because it's so easy to kind of hide behind things here. You know, you right. are doing things on your own, but at the same time you're doing it with a group. So you may not, you know, coach may not be looking at you exactly, you know, during that workout at that time, but you know if you didn't do a rep or you know if you right. you know didn't really push it towards mm-hmm. the end and you yeah, just maybe kinda... stopped five seconds before the clock was exactly. up and you could have done one more power exactly yeah. you could have done one more and i think it's really important if if you can get used to just after the workout just look in and kind of check yourself you know, listen yeah. what what did i do if you could be honest with yourself and I, I, take ownership and take ownership yep i mean you'll I think you will see leaps and bounds of improvement there. Sure. I mean, and that's uh, not just in CrossFit; that's in everything. And that's yeah, exactly, uh, I, I, exactly. I always get really frustrated when um, I, I like it's like something that my parents talk to me about, like little white lies or like little things, small things. Yeah. Um, we tend to push it off. You know, uh, you can look at it with your diet. Oh, it's like, oh, come on, it's not a big deal. Just tonight, you know. We'll just, you know, I don't really feel like only, cooking. Let's order only pizza. Only two date rules, right? Only two. I mean, six <laughs> date rules. You know, whole the whole box, yeah, right? Yeah. No, it's like small things. It, what people might not notice, and they know this, they might not, you know, think about it this way. But yeah. a big thing is is a bunch of small things put together. Yeah. And it's what you do every small thing that makes a huge difference. Like huge. not holding the door open for someone. Yeah. That's a small thing. <laughs> exactly. You might not forget about it. You yeah. you never they'll forget about it. They might get mad and flip you off, but yeah. they'll forget about that those small things make you. And I think on the mat I have no experience with that besides yeah. the training that I had um in the military. Yeah, but, combat um, combatives. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It, one small thing is the difference between you losing yeah. and you win it. Exactly. Like, so if you, if you, you know, make one mistake, he's going to take advantage of that. And it's the same thing with a, with a, with a snatch or a power clean, the power clean example. Yeah. If, if you can power clean 295 and you have 300 on the bar yeah. and you, you know, leave the bar out too far ahead, the bar is going to win. Yeah. And that applies to CrossFit. It applies to life exactly. and it applies to relationships. You know, how many small things can your spouse take before it's a big thing? Right, exactly, and, exactly. And taking ownership of that and not being afraid to take ownership of that, that's hard. That's yeah. hard for anyone to, to, to look at themselves and, like, it's, it's easy to blame. Like, I, I would say that's probably one of the hardest things to do is I truly look at yourself and and be able to say, all right, do I like Because <laughs> you're probably not going to like a lot of stuff. Right. But you know what? It can be changed you know, very, just little increments, you know, think, mm-hmm. little things here and there. And uh, a lot of times we, we get... Uh, you know, hey, uh, <laughs> that's a little thing right there. That's a little she flipped thing. us yeah, off. She just flipped us off. As she was that is a little thing. I'm going to bank that, <laughs> and that's going to make my image of that. <laughs> so, what are you saying? Yeah, no, I mean, it, it's it's so, just so important, um, you know, you know, fudging a rep here or there, whatever. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, you, no you one may, might know. And no one may know. And you know what? You probably, you probably, very close to that rep anyway, or that weight, or whatever the case may be. Um, but in the end, is it true? You know, um, you know that. You know that. You know. You're gonna walk. You yeah, know. you're gonna walk away <laughs> knowing that. And that and that goes. So. And it, the same thing applies to yourself. How many times are you gonna lie to your 
to yourself, yeah. the small things build up in you too. Exactly. And um, I think I think a lot of it is is like it stems from um, comparing ourselves to other people a lot. So we want to be at this certain point or we see ourselves at this certain point mentally and we probably are that good or are at that level that we expect of ourselves, but if we fall short, then it's like, oh, you know, okay, I'll, you know, maybe it wasn't that bad. And we kind of lie to ourselves and we, and it all comes from that comparison. You know, if, if, you know, stop doing that, (laughs) just worry about yourself. (laughs) Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. And I think, um, it never ends and you always have something to strive for. Um, so start now. Just yeah. Start doing it now. Exactly. I think that makes. I think that makes a huge exactly. difference. Exactly. Um, it's never too late to to make that change. Um, in amongst that, you, you talked about you needed to make a change. You you went and sought out treatment multiple times, yeah. and luckily you found the right guy. Was there anything um, nutrition wise or anything uh, li- a- obviously lifestyle wise? You you started cross. Is there anything else? that you changed that might lead us into um, another reason why I got you here, which is uh, the beautiful, beautiful, tasty kombucha. Oh, yes, yes. Huh. <laughs> yeah, but I, wanna, well, I just want to know if there's anything else besides that, that did you, did you start, did you, were you on a diet? Like, I mean, obviously with wrestling, you, you cut weight a lot. Yeah. You had to have known something yeah. about nutrition to, and, to be able to, to you know, fit in weight yeah, classes. Yeah, you would think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enlighten You would like, think so. Know. I mean, you, we, we all have, you know, especially – beyond the high school level, you kind of have a, a pretty good idea as far as how to eat healthy. And I'd always grown up eating fairly healthy, but um, cutting weight unhealthily and, and doing it the wrong way. And I've, I've learned a lot since then. Um, but um, for me, I, I've really, I, I've kept experimenting, honestly. I, it's been a nonstop experimenting process. I'm still trying different things right now. Um, but yeah, trying to get my diet under control because if I, if I would have too many, you know, even if it's too many cheats here and there, it, it would really it, it can have some pretty big snowball effects. Could that throw you off hormone wise? Yes, like that, yes, I was gonna. That's bit. what I was wondering yeah. too because uh, um, and I know gut health and brain health yes are very huge. much connected, and I'm not gonna even try to get scientific with yeah. it because I, I that's way out of my yeah and, here, but. I, I know what I do know is that there makes a big difference. Oh, health. it's huge. And, and, um, gut health was something that I have only fairly within the past, I would say a couple of years have started getting into. Um, and that was really thanks to my brother. Um, cause he really stumbled across it first and then said, Hey, you really need to you know, try drinking some kombucha or, you know, just getting that gut bacteria healthy again. Um, and sure enough, I, I, I started doing that and I saw a big, improvement as far as my ability to fight off sickness right so sickness is a big problem for me because if i get sick i have to increase the amount of medication i take um if i can't hold that medication down i have to go to the emergency room like that's just that quick yeah i can't i can't wait so so um so it's it's a very important thing for me to to try and stay healthy and, and improve my immune system not just mask it with you know antibiotics or whatever Right. Um, well, and then so, especially the antibiotics, that's going to completely gonna make, clear you out. You have to start over exactly, again. Exactly, exactly. And this all stuff that really I didn't really understand at the time. So I started looking into that gut health a little bit. And I, you know, I, I'm obviously, I'm not a doctor by any means, but um, then there's a lot of information out there that's, it's good information. Some of it's not so good, but, um, but definitely, I mean, it's, it's something that they're finding out more and more that gut health isn't just related to your body it's also mental i mean there's Mm -hmm. i think they said there's over like 100 trillion um, bacteria in your gut a lot there should be (laughs) you know (laughs) yummy (laughs) yum yum Uh, (laughs) so like feeling it right now i know it's like time it's like central station down there but it's it's good bacteria there's you know there's good and there's bad bacteria but the but not but the bacteria in your gut is also responsible for producing um neurochemicals so things like right. serotonin yeah and melatonin things like that so mm-hmm. just that's why that's why cookies make you feel so feel good so, feel so <laughs> when great. they get down there it's just like all the serotonin <laughs> yeah so it's it's you know having a healthy culture of bacteria in your gut is so important i mean they're they're linking it to all kinds of things um 
But the big problem I think that we're having nowadays, just in general with people's health, um, you know, diabetes, even they've been linking it to diabetes, Alzheimer's. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just crazy stuff like um, depression, uh, anxiety issues. Right. I mean, it's it, it goes even on eczema and on. was on eczema, uh, eczema was, was on that. That's something yeah. that I struggle with. Uh, that's that's a, definitely on the board too. Yeah, it's 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 amazing. I. I was doing a little bit of reading on it a couple of days ago. And I mean, the list that I was reading on all these things that could be related to just in a, you know, our diets because our diets are right. lacking the good bacteria. Yep. So we're eating all this stuff that's treated with pesticides. Um, you know, it's GMOs. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're, we're doing the processed food. We take antibiotics. Yep. Um, even, even like, uh, ibuprofen, uh, right. And I was surprised when I read that too. Uh, it's, it's, just shocking like that stuff has a play in all of that it really affects Mm -hmm. our our gut bacteria and then obviously if if our diets are high in carbs and sugar um the bad stuff then then that's the bad bacteria feeds on that so now we've we've actually changed we're feeding the wrong army and not only that but bacteria they're finding is actually what makes up 90 percent of our dna which I had no idea. What? So we're literally changing our DNA, which is, you know, wow. then we have cancer, you know, you know, things like oh, that. I'm so throw out those Oreos now. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I had well, Oreos. My DNA I is Oreos changing. Too, you know, but I, and it's not it's not about having those those treats every now and then. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. the the chronically over <laughs> for sure <laughs> over and I feel like this audience, if they're listening to this, they know that. Yeah, they I, mean, I that. think I think so. It's the right crowd for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, so we we're just not getting the right bacteria in our system. So Mm -hmm. by doing things like kombucha or, um, fermented, you know, product, uh, basically just fermented foods in general are very good for you because it puts the good bacteria back in. And then if we can feed that good bacteria with, you know, greens and, and good meats, they're going to keep, you know, they're going to stay there and keep our body healthy. So I I honestly don't remember the last time I was sick. Um, it's been a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So what is kombucha? Uh, so, just to make sure yeah. that someone that doesn't know, um, do you, yeah. So kombucha is just is just fermented tea, typically yeah. black tea. Uh, right. I think you from can the do, caffeine, right? Yeah, from the cat. And, and I th- believe you can t- you can also do green tea, but yeah. I think it's harder. And I I don't remember why. I think it was the the um, caffeine when I was okay. when I was reading about it today and just kind of in preparation for this. I think the the biggest thing mm. the guy was talking about was that the black tea is so important because it makes it that much easier with the the caffeine. Yeah. It has something to do with you know, uh, working with the the Scooby, I think is it called <laughs> Scooby. Scooby. Yeah, I was Scobie. thinking. Of, I was thinking of Kate. <laughs> Scooby Doo. Yes, yeah, so, <laughs> Scooby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Scobie. So keep going. That's, yeah, that's yeah. No, saying. so it's um, it's just basically a fermented um, tea, and you can get to that fermentation simply by um, it. And it's really fairly simple. My my brother and I actually have made a batch before we did a couple, um, and he he's done more than I have. So he's been actually he he would be a better person but he's not here so yeah uh, <laughs> um but he um what we did is we just we made the tea um and then you put in sugar into the tea and that's what the oh. so that that tea um or the bacteria is going to feed off the sugar um right it goes back to so, what you're talking about yeah, with our own body exactly so once you ferment the tea um you put in this scoby which is essentially just um uh, the bacteria or a, a culture of the bacteria. Yeah. It looks like a it deflated looks, jellyfish. It's a, yeah, exactly. It's it really exactly does. What Look it, does. it up. Yeah, it's, it's kind of icky. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's definitely kind of neat. You definitely you want to chomp into it. You know, take a bite. Oh, so. oh, oh! <laughs> so make a sandwich. <laughs> yummy. Um, but yeah, so you put that into the tea. You put the sugar. Basically, that's its food. And as it's eating the food, it's creating the fermentation process. So it's going through that process. And then um, I believe it's. It, I mean, we. We let it sit for, I think it was just two weeks. Mm. Or and you were and saying that the sitting. longer it, you, it sits, the more fermented it gets, the more alcohol. Yeah, the more, yeah. so the longer fer- it sits, the more fermented, and obviously the, uh, the higher alcohol in there. But it's still going to be very small because right. of what we're looking to do or what we're fermenting. It's just yeah. tea. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, so after that, you can really kind of play with it as far as flavoring goes and um would recommend using something like an organic um juice or Mm -hmm. excuse me a puree or something like that um organic uh if you do like a cold pressed grape juice fantastic tastes like uh grape soda and that's Um, like oh 
it's delicious. That's like the I guess that's the advantage of doing it yourself is you get to control yeah. the, the amount of flavor if you want it more exactly. bitter, if you want it more sweet compared to like what I buy most of yeah. mine from Hannaford at this point. Yeah, um, and and those and that's kind of what we were going off of, and we yeah. even used it. So you want to pour um, a little bit of an existing kombucha into the one you're making ah. just a just a little bit to give it something to go off of right um and in and order to make it you need a was it scoby you need a scoby you need yeah. one of those and they're very and cheap you, very cheap yeah so. but you, can't you can't you sh- share one because when you make a new batch doesn't it create a new scoby yes so once you make one you're going to have another one in that batch ah, so you'll end okay, up having yeah, yeah. two uh when you're done and then you so kinda... you can m- keep making b- more and more batches right, so every right. time you make one you're going to be given an extra one uh yeah. we should make a community form. batch here. yeah it'll be, just have like eight of them going giant <laughs> just like, take a booty shot going and then you on fran. here yeah and so you can go as strong as you want we went a little bit stronger um with two and a half weeks i think they recommended two but we went to two and a half because we did mm-hmm. we wanted a little more of that um because uh, the more it ferments the more bacteria too that has time to grow in there yeah. so uh, we wanted a little bit stronger um and we just did a bunch of samples but honestly the two best were the grape and i did like a uh i just pureed a uh cup of strawberries and a cup of blueberries and oh, put delicious. those like a little bit in the bottom and it was awesome Boom. so delicious yeah. so uh, um everyone can kind of start with just going to hannaford grabbing the bottles trying those out yeah. and before maybe going to their own homemade yeah stuff. try it takes it's it's kind of an acquired taste it, it remind me of coffee in a way where yeah. Don't open it and sniff it. Just don't do it. That's what I did. And <laughs> I was like, it. Yeah, what is this? You might throw this? you off a little bit. You'll see yeah. some, you're going to see There's some floaties. floaties. Yeah. Some floaties in there. Just disregard like, and what? take your sip. You won't, you won't, you won't feel them. Just, just take a sip. Yeah. Unless you, you do You the, will feel the chia seeds. If you do the chia seeds. I did not like that one. <laughs> it's like I had to chew it. Like you're eating I don't pieces chew of it. snot or yeah. something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was snotty. I didn't it like, was, I tried it. It was, it tastes good. I just yeah. wish it, the uh, chia seeds yeah. threw me off. There, and there's a lot of good flavors. If you go to natural uh, food stores, they tend to have a bigger selection right. usually. You might get carded, just so you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, would, I got carded at Hannaford <laughs> down in Saco, and I was like, what's so going on? Weird, it's because yeah. we had a, there was one from Maine. There's a, a local one. Okay. And, uh, I guess it had just enough that they carded us. Oh, that's it's not weird. Big deal, okay. Yeah. See, I've never been carded or anything on yeah. stuff like that. Um, and they're a little pricey. Li- they are a little pricey. And so, but and the, you don't have, and the thing is we, we, I go that route because it's easy, it's de- delicious, and you can kind of get them in. But there's plenty of other ways to go, too. Um, you can go, like, kimchi if you like fermented um, cabbage, um, mm-hmm. There's which is great. But <laughs> uh, it's not bad. <laughs> I like it. Um, yeah. And so there's there's other ways to go to get that gut bacteria. I know you can get it with yogurt, but really yeah. it's not enough. With a bottle of, you know, kombucha, you're going to be getting about two, mil- two billion. Two billion. <laughs> I always laugh. Two billion organisms. So I yeah. I brought oh, no. I brought another option. Oh no. <laughs> and I was I was hoping you'd forget. No, I didn't. Before you left I, of here. course I didn't forget. Oh so this got, other thing what this is, is this? A, this is your measuring cup. This is what you're gonna take your shot oh, out of. All right. Oh so this other thing is called a gut shot. And I got this <laughs> at an organic store as well. All right. <laughs> okay. Oh, so now, you didn't this, make this. I didn't not make this. This is just okay. called a gut shot. That makes me feel a little better. Not that I don't, don't trust you, but you might I didn't know if you just Come got on. I don't know if Come you on. just forgot one and you're just like, oh, you hit a gut oh, shot. Give, give him one of those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the ones with like eight scoobies. We, <laughs> we let this one sit for five weeks. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> we forgot no, it in the backyard. No, this one. These are not as delicious as the kombucha. <sighs> However, they're not bad, and they, the taste goes away quickly. <sighs> so, but this one is a kimchi flavored. <laughs> oh, oh! They don't have really good flavored ones, but well, why would they? <laughs> why would they do that? <laughs> because here's well, a here's a fart flavored gut <laughs> shot. Just, this is what's <laughs> just just take. It smells it. the same on the way in as just, it goes just out. Just take. Should it. I have like a date roll ready to go? I, you got you got something like a you can yeah a date roll no, be fine. Yeah, I don't need it. So so this this one Big though do by doing a shot, there's about uh, ten shots in here. I think it is. Um, yeah, ten. That's ten, it. Ten plus. That's shots a lot of per liquid. Bottle. Ten plus. It says. Jeez, um, so um, you want to take um, per shot is about. Um, uh, it's about a eighth of a cup or oh, uh, one and a half. Do ounces. you have just one of those, bro? Huh? Yeah, I mean, I'll take one after you. Uh, oh, we'll, I see. We'll, I we'll, see. You, we'll share. <laughs> we'll share. <laughs> we should have so, shared a mic. So this one, though, in the entire bottle, there's 110 billion Whoa. bacteria in it. So that means per shot, just a little thing like this, you're getting 10 billion. Oh man, bacteria in you. So you, boom, 
<laughs> Boom, you're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> with, with some I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> what is this? So, hang out. All right. All right. So, oh, he's pouring I'll it. Give you a little bit. He's pour pouring it. In it. Here. it does not look. It, okay, I just. Okay, don't, what? How don't. would you just. Is that carrot juice? It looks no, like. No, no. Okay, so this It is, looks like carrot juice. This, it looks like carrot juice. Actually, there are carrots in here. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, I'm not lying. I see that so carrot on there. It's it's called kimchi flavor. Ugh. Now, it don't smell it. <laughs> don't smell just, it. Just take the shot. And it's gonna have a little burning, but it oh, goes great. away quickly. It goes away quickly. All right, here we go. So. Right. And I'll do one after you. All right, so. I'm gonna do it. Oh man, dude, there's a lot of liquid. Just don't even think about it, and just swallow. Oh, it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. clears throat> oh. But it goes away quickly, so just give it a second. Oh, jeez. Hey. All right, I would describe that as. Ooh. Very kimchi. Oh my breath smells <laughs> if you've amazing. Had kimchi. <laughs> it's like it was like a spicy a tomato soup, but just not not necessarily the ooh, ooh. Yeah, it's um Dude. it's no joke. The other yeah. one I brought. Alright, so what one. is this? Uh, turn it towards me. I want so, so it's farmhouse culture kimchi gut shots. Yeah. Where'd you get that? I got that one at um Tiller and Rye. All right, which is don't get it. Food. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> they, they really, I've only seen like three flavors, and so mm. far, all of them are rank. <laughs> yeah, it's spicy. But it's spicy. It's but not it, that bad. And it goes away quickly, yeah. so you don't have this nasty aftertaste. But just by doing one of those shots, now you got, you got 10 billion. Dude, I'm good for so. like a month. But the, a bottle like that is about $7, whereas mm. your kombucha. You know, you're paying about like three, four, f- three or four bucks yeah, for yeah, yeah, one yeah. of those, and you only get two billion if you drink the whole bottle. Oh, man. So you can do know, one bro. shot of those for about the price of two yeah. hey, of your kombuchas, that's and that will good. last you. So I'll usually buy two of those, and it lasts me for like two and a half yeah, weeks or you something just like compromise that. happiness. That's yeah, fine. exactly. <laughs> no, that's I good, still man. I still do the kombucha. I'll just I'll spread them. I'll do a shot of those every night, and then yep. just do kombucha in the yeah. day or something like that. So. I know. So... Um, you turned me on to this not that long ago, um, and and my girlfriend Sarah was talking about it. She was the first one to finally get me. She I credit her for a lot because she got me to try sushi for the first time, Ooh. and it's like my favorite thing in the world now. Yeah, so she finally got me to do it, um, and I smelled it, mistake, <laughs> tasted it, meh, not so good. Just like sushi experience and like coffee and everything. Yeah. But I kept doing it, and and um, I suffer from eczema. And so yeah. the, that's that that red deal that yeah. you'll see on my hands pretty much every day, um, and it was it was kind of flaring up. And I also had some digestive issues, um, especially with things like dairy, wheat, oats. Yeah. And I and I would take things out and put them in, and I couldn't like pinpoint anything. Yeah. Like I'd be good. Like I could have like I could have an uh, ice cream. And I'd be fine. And then yeah. I'd have like pizza and then I'd be like destroyed, destroyed for, yeah. you know, the next morning. And then I'd have ice cream and I was destroyed. But yeah. then I wasn't. It was it was so inconsistent. And some days I'd be really, uh, you know, peppy and high energy. And some days I'd be kind of more depressed and kind of, you know, yeah. uh, low energy. And then um, started taking the kombucha. Yep. I went a little ham on it, you know, kind of had almost like a whole thing a day for yeah. a couple of days. And Which first is thing totally I noticed, fine too, yeah. So. First thing I noticed, uh, got yeah, it is. It got it. <laughs> I noticed my bank account went down, and then I noticed that um, my gut started feeling a little bit better. I started I had yeah. less less like, so I was experiencing like a lot of bloating, a lot of yeah. gas, um, and then some extreme cases. You know, the next morning with certain foods, and it start. I'd still have a couple of episodes, but yeah. as the weeks went on, and I kept keeping with it, I saw some significant improvements now granted in, in association with some prescription creams on my hands i noticed right. my my skin kind of cleared up a little bit my energy's been more consistent yeah. and i do notice when i stop and when i won't have it for five days and i'll have yeah. like another food that it was kind of like reactionary to me yeah. um it would come back and i'd take it and be good yeah. um and i don't have solid evidence i don't know if there's anything other variables that i might yeah. consider with stress or sleep or whatever but I, I'm all for it now. I, I yeah. usually do a half of kombucha on Monday. I'll do a yogurt on Tuesday. I'll have the other half of the kombucha on Wednesday. And I kind yeah. of, the yogurt is kind of like, I know it's not quite the same as much, but it kind of is like my in-between. Yeah. And I kind of think it's more like a maintenance deal. Yep. And I tell you what, man, I've, I've, I've had a lot of a lot of good results with it. Yeah. And, and I kind of invite everyone out there to just give it a shot. You know, there's yeah. really not too much. There's, there's some studies out there. Some are inconclusive. Some are good. Exactly. And, and, and there's some people that think it's, you know, bogus, but there's so much yeah. stuff there's, out there there's like that. There's a lot, and I feel like I'm I'm stumbling across more and more of 
um, a legit article the, the good saying, ones, yeah. you know, hey, there's something to this. Yeah, exactly. And and a lot of people too, it's not necessarily that your diet's bad. It's that your diet's good, but you've had a deficiency in that gut bacteria for most of your life because right. a lot of times that it can be passed on from your parents, right, from right, your right. mother, um, whether or not she breasts, you know, uh, breastfeeding or right. um, even little things like that. If she didn't have that great of gut bacteria when she had you, mm-hmm. um, it, it's it's amazing that gets passed on to you. Yeah. So you could be eating very healthy and still be experiencing some issues, right. which I was doing too, even just like you said, your gl- gut bloating, like, I, I was experiencing that big time, and I was eating so clean for, yeah, for yeah. a long time. I was like, why is this happening? Mm-hmm. And as the instant I started introducing that to my diet, inst- it was gone. No more right. no more bloating at all. and didn't feel it. For sure. Um, and like you said, my, my mood in general is just mm-hmm. much more even uh, throughout yeah. the day. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely, like you said, I, I'm a... I'm a believer in it. It's yeah, don't for me, yeah, so. don't just take our word for it. Just try it. It's like one of those yeah. things. It's not a cure all. We're not right. gaining anything from this, and they're not sponsored by kombucha. I mean, seriously, if you want to sponsor us, ever. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except for that gut, that gut shot crap. I don't want to be sponsored by that. <laughs> but no, but seriously, there's try nothing. The there's shot. nothing don't about take his word for it. Yeah, um, try it. And there's no, uh, there's no reason not to. Yeah. And and you and if you find success, stick with it. If you don't, then, yeah. then, then throw and it out. But it, I think you know, it's. I'd, and and you know it's like anything else you know give it give it a, at least a month you know yeah, give it a sure. try give it a, a a good try and see if you notice anything but yeah I'm I'm a definite believer and I mm-hmm. I think a lot of people can at least have the benefits of f- just feeling cleaner I don't yeah. know if that's the right word yeah so yeah no, for but, sure uh, yeah yeah give it a shot you know give it a couple a couple uh, drinks and I think I think you'll like it and uh, it's enjoyable that's for sure and it has some uh, good benefits so. yeah thanks for sharing that with us man yeah um before we head out. I ask everyone this, um, that one thing, and I might know, you might have already said the answer, so you can maybe oh. reiterate something you've already done, but that, the one thing CrossFit has given you. Uh, and, yeah. yeah. Well, definitely, it definitely has, for me, filled that that part of my life yeah. that was, a, you know, I, I was missing. So I was definitely not the same person without it. And I was always looking for, you know, how do I how do I get that? I just was, you know. I was a shell. <laughs> no, <laughs> just an empty shell. <laughs> I was just an empty shell. Um, but no, it it means so much to me in that sense because it, it's a it's an outlet for me as far as being able to to hit that point, point. Um, and it just has allowed me to to I don't know develop physically and grow in a way I didn't really think about before. Um, and just I'm still learning, man. So much to learn. So yeah. I just love it. I love to be challenged. I like going home and feeling destroyed. You know, mm-hmm. especially after competition, man, it's as close as I've gotten to feeling like uh, spent <laughs> yeah. a tournament uh, wrestling or something. But right. uh, you come a long way. It's been yeah, very cool to watch. It's been been very a blast. Cool. I've been having fun. <clears throat> so, <laughs> well, thanks for doing this, man. Yeah, this was awesome. That was awesome. This is my this is my break breakout moment. This is my breakthrough. <laughs> this is it. This is so, this so, is the one. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing we know, you're gonna you're gonna come I'll out with famous. shorts sponsored by kombuchas. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, Sh- this this out. workout this shout butt sponsored Rogan. by kombucha. <laughs> It's my right. boy. <laughs> so, hey, okay. thanks. That was awesome. That was fun. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening to the CrossFit Bangor podcast. As always, you can find us on iTunes. Check out our Instagram, our Facebook, and our website, CrossFitBangor.com. As always, if there's anything you want us to talk about on the podcast, you can email me directly at Zach at CrossFitBangor.com. Thanks for listening, guys, and I'll see you at the gym.